Welcome to Tech Thursdays. This is Professor DIY for the Urban Home Styling Channel. And today we're going to work on a 3D printer and hopefully we'll teach you something about your 3D printer in the process. So stick around. This is going to be a very exciting video. If you have a 3D, 3D printer, some maintenance and small repairs are required. Today we're going to show you how to replace a hot end, specifically on the Anycubic Cobra 2 Neo but it is very similar on every 3D printer as long as you know how to reach your hot end and how to remove it. This is the failed one. I already have removed it and replaced it, but we're going to show you every step of the way. Usually when you have something failing like a thermistor, you're going to see widely variate variance in temperatures. You will not be able to, to lock in the temperature you want. And in the most severe case, like in my case, it will actually fail. It will give you a failure notice on the printer. Now we think because of the value that plays up and down it will go from 240 to 170. I am quite convinced it is the thermistor that causes the problem. And the second uh, likely event, if you cannot reach temperatures or if you're too hot or too cold, is actually your heater, which is also here. This is the wires that control the heater. And in more rare cases, it could be your, your board, your control board. And if that is the case, you have to, to change the whole unit. In this specific printer, that is a fairly inexpensive part as well. So stick around. I am Professor DIY. You are watching Urban Home Studying DIY. And this is going to be a very fun episode. So today we're going to replace the hot end, which in my printer, it looks like this. In fact, this is the very hot end I replaced. And the symptoms, symptoms I have is wild variations in temperature that will not lock on and the printer will not start printing because it never hits the tam target temperature. It goes well above and well below, but never stays in the target temperature. In most cases, these wild variat variations in temperature indicate a, a, a bad thermistor, which is really the device that decides that you're in the right temperature and stops the heater from continuing heating. Now, small variations under two degrees are not important, but wild variations and the inability to lock onto the target temperature indicate a failure of some sort. So stick around, you're still my favorite viewer and I will show you every step on the way on how to do it if you have a any cubic Cobra 2 Neo or the general concepts of what you need to do if you have any other printer. I tend to have a couple of those uh, hot ends available because they are the most common failure in uh, 3D printers. So if it's not very expensive for your printer, it's a good idea to do it. For my printer, they're only about $8. Don't buy the cheapest ones, try to buy the original ones. I did try an inexpensive one and it was nothing but trouble, but they should not be very expensive. So you're ready to print your newest 3D design as I'm here. And you're waiting for everything to hit the correct temperature. You can see here that our uh, th uh, hot end needs to be at 205 degrees and our bed needs to be at 60 degrees. And the hot end moves quite quickly, which sometimes is a sign that uh, the thermistor is failing. But we're going to see what will happen. A lot of people are really concerned about their 3D printer catching a fire because it the thermistor doesn't uh, register correctly the temperature and it overheats and so forth. So let's see that. We're at 161 degrees already. And you can see the temperature rising. So far it looks reasonably normal, right? I mean, the temperature rises until it reaches the appropriate temperature, which is 205 degrees. And then hopefully it will stop at that temperature. And you notice, however, that the bed temperature rises much slower than the hot end temperature. Again, nothing unusual so far. We are just waiting. You notice it went past and then it dropped and now it went past again the target temperature. It's supposed to slowly, when it does that, that's not necessarily ab abnormal, but now it's abnormal. It went to 200. 38 degrees, 40 degrees, and now drop to 173. And this is simply not a normal process. So we're going to go to the printer itself and we are going to see that 
we have heating failure and the printer is halted so we're going to turn the printer off and you can see the printer did not get on fire but simply halted so I remove the extruder and hot end and this is how mine look like and initially I'm just looking for any damage in the wires this wire is the thermistor wire and this wire is the heater wire I don't see anything right off but I will need to separate the shroud from the rest of the assembly and make sure for example that the fan assembly and everything else looks correct again I don't see any initial problem the connections seem to be correct nothing seems to be loose here and this is your first step of course to making sure that everything is how it's supposed to be nothing is loose and everything is correct again this is the thermistor and this is the heater and everything looks coming I'm sorry this is the heater this is the thermistor I could potentially unplug and replug it and see if that will fix it but I have another one so I will simply go and replace it this is the fan cables and I'm making sure we don't have any discontinuity you can also use a a multimeter and checks that the cables are okay I am not sure that the fan works this is not an extremely loud fan and I'm not sure that the fan works on observation first observation I don't really see any problem and again on first observation I see no problem with the thermistor wires which are these wires here I will have to remove the hot end to take a closer look. Again, for this printer, these are very inexpensive, so replacing it should not be a big deal. Since we do not see any problem just by looking at the module, we're going to separate the hot end from the extruder. And actually not the hot end, just half of the hot end right there. This is going to stay attached for now. We're going to remove that and replace it. And that contains both the thermistor and the heating element. So if either of those is the problem, we're going to know by putting a new one. So let us do that and we'll go into On my printer, there are only two set screws right there that hold the hot end together. So we are going to, re to remove those screws. Unfortunately, I don't have any any way to record it while I'm doing it, so but it's straightforward. You remove you undo those uh, two screws, set screws, and this just slides out. First, however, we need to disconnect the two cables from the. So the two cables have been removed, and as you can see, the set screws have been uh, raised. And I'll see. I, I don't think I can do it with one hand, but we will try it. So these now should just be able to come off. And as you can see, it just pulls off and we're going to replace it with a new one. A common error, and I'll let's see if I can focus here, but it, there is a leap, focus. There is a leap there and you need to make sure that it is well seated I'm not sure 100% if I'm very well seated yet, but if that is not well seated, you're going to have uh, extrusion problems with the filament coming out incorrectly. As you probably noticed before, I had a little gap, so I fully seated it now. And as you can see, that little lip is touching the, the heater element. So we should be good. Now it is just cable management and reinserting the whole thing together. So now I've... Uh Ask it to print, as you can see here, and we are watching that. It's going to take some time to get to the bed heated to the correct temperature. And because we were extruding, it was at a higher temperature. So we're going to see if it's able to keep it or if it's going to wildly go up and down as it was doing before. So it will take a moment or two to know if we actually fixed it. I don't see the wild swings of temperature, but we will not know for sure until our bed, 
which is now at 40 degrees, reach 60 degrees. At that point, if the target temperature is correct on both, the extrude uh, is a 205 and the bed is at 60, we should see a movement of the head and it should start printing. So let's hop. Uh, the bed is a big surface and it takes a little bit of time to to fully heat up. But I can see the temperature holding pretty reasonably on the hot end. And this is what we want. We have nine degrees more to go on the bed. But you don't see the wild deviations we saw before. It was going to 240 and dropping to 170 and so forth. So now we see a more control process. The one two degree variation is not abnormal. It's just trying to hold the temperature correct. And we're almost at 60 at the bed. So if everything goes well, the moment we hit 60, if we're close to 205, it should start printing. And the gantry start moving. The bed is moving. So let's hop. We're not getting an error on, on our print as we did before. And we do not get a, a red warning screen that the printing has been halted. So, so far that looks normal. And if we start printing, we will know that this was a successful fix. There is also a little circuit board that uh, it's actually on the main part of the extruder that could be the problem. And if that was the problem, then we will have to change the whole head. However, <clears throat> more than likely it is either the thermistor or the, the heating element. And I, I really think it was the thermistor, but let's see. This was a fairly inexpensive, for this printer at least, the parts are fairly inexpensive. On my Anycubic, they are a little higher. I meant to say my bamboo lap. This is my Anycubic. So far, so good. We're going to see. Yeah, it left a little blob, which means we're extruding. And let's see if it's going to start now printing. But anyway, as you can see now, the printer works, operates as it should. It can start printing. We're going to see if the first print is a, a successful print. And unfortunately, I've chosen a print for the first print that I've never printed before. So that is not definitely the, the best idea. I forgot to calibrate the printer. After you do anything major like this, you need to do a calibration of the printer, both your position and also auto level the bed. If you don't do that, you might have difficulties with your prints. So I did the position calibration, now we're going to do the auto level. And then we'll print again. I stopped the print because I realized I've not done that and I saw that it was actually Scraping the bed, not a good thing, but at least this is an old uh, plate, so it will need replacement soon anyway, so I'm not too concerned about it. So I reset the printer and I used a new print that I have used before, so I can evaluate how the printer is performing. And here you see it operating and it is doing a very good job. The layers look great, there is no lifting, everything is as it's supposed to be. So it appears that our repair was successful. And again, uh, a couple of mistakes that I made was not calibrated after I changed the hot end. You must always do that. And uh, it did some damage to my plate, but in any case, the damage was not substantial and uh, the plate is old. But in any case, learn from my mistakes. I leave them in my videos because I want you to learn from them versus me just uh, hiding them and pretend I'm the, the perfect fixer up. So this was a successful uh, event. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, we'll appreciate a thumbs up. 
Also, please let me know what you want me to do different because this is a new style of video.